Hello Pipe community, Bear Pipe here. Today I want to talk to you about bowl coatings. Uh, it's something that I took a long time to figure out how to do because of the fact that it's like one of those things that people just don't share their recipes. They just don't tell you how they do it or what they put in there. It's like this mystery. Every pipe maker has their own little recipe and their own thing that they do and nobody tells anybody what it is. And uh, I want to lift the veil today. But this is a little controversial because there are some people who believe that bowl coatings is from the pit of hell, born from Satan and should never be used. Uh, there's a group of people who feel that bowl coatings uh, impact on the, the taste of the tobacco and therefore ruins a good pipe. My personal experience has not been that. My personal experience has been that I can't taste any difference with a bowl coating or without. And uh, maybe it's just the recipe that I use, but I don't think it's particularly unique. So um, maybe my palate's just not refined enough. So I use bowl coatings and um, the pipe I'm going to use it on today and show you is the Parker Pipe Project. Uh, it's just the final step. The pipe is done. It's ready to be smoked now and uh, can go back into the world. The final step was to put a bowl coating in. And the reason I use bowl coatings on these old pipes is because it's an estate pipe. Uh, you know, when I uh, ream them out, I ream them right back to the bare wood because I want to see what's going on in the bowl. If there's any kind of little cracks or anything, I want to know about it so that I can deal with it. Uh, if there's any kind of flaws in there that's hidden underneath that cake that's in an old pipe, I need to know. Uh, otherwise, I can't trust that the pipe's going to last. But being back down to bare wood means that it has to be broken in all over again. And sometimes these are all timers. You know, I, I kind of feel a little nervous about breaking in a pipe that is 50 or 60 years old all over again from bare wood. So it gives me just a little bit of comfort to know that you put a bowl coating in there. It's just going to protect it during those first few smokes and stop it from getting a burnout. Now, the bowl coating I use uh, is edible. It is totally food safe. You can stick it in your mouth, you can eat it, and nothing's going to happen to you. And I think that's important in any bowl coating. It's not a chemical product. It's actually a food safe product. Uh, there are different coatings that I've discovered over the, you know, my period of researching this. I found two different ways of doing it. I prefer one over the other. I'm going to show you both, but I'm only going to apply the one that I typically use in pipes in this one. And um, I found with this bowl coating that I don't taste anything. Um, it's completely odorless. It's completely tasteless. And it just gives that bit of protection. And it's relatively durable. It doesn't wipe off easily with your bare hands. So if you're busy, you know, packing your pipe for the first few bowls, it's not like you're going to scrape it off or rub it off with your bare fingers. Um, the other thing about it that's really good is the fact that you can wipe it out with a damp cloth and remove it if you want to. Uh, you know, take a cloth, make it wet, rub it out, and it'll come off. So if you don't like it, it's very easy to remove. And uh, that's also a good thing. So because some people don't want them, some people want it out. So it's always good to know that there's a way to remove it. I'm going to use this little piece of briar block, and I'm going to show you two techniques on this surface that you can use to do this. And what you need is some activated charcoal. And you get this in any kind of health food store and you get them in capsules and you just pop the capsules open. So what they look like, pop those open and you put them in. There's 260 milligrams, so a quarter of a gram in each one of these. And the first method that you can use is to use some honey. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put a little bit on my finger like that. And I'm going to smear the honey over the briar. And what this does, it just creates a bit of a sticky surface. Of course, the honey is, is a well-known uh, 
material has been used for many years by people who want to uh, accelerate their bowl coatings because it helps to make it more sticky for things. And what you're going to do, actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a paper towel here underneath it. I'm just going to pop one of these open. You cover the honey with the charcoal. You let it sit on there for a little bit. Usually what you would do it is you'd, you'd kind of press it into the bowl and let it sit. See, it's quite messy. And you let that dry. Now, drying time for that could easily be a week, I found. And I'm going to do a clean up here. And then I'm going to show you the other method. What you can see is happening here is the honey is absorbing the charcoal. Now, how you would do this uh, in a pipe is you take your finger, you would wipe the bowl out with the honey, you'd fill the bowl with charcoal, let it sit overnight. The next day, you empty out what's not used and then you let it sit to dry and you need to let it sit for quite a little while. Like I said, sometimes for up to a week before that honey actually dries out. The second method, which is my preferred method, you use sour cream. And I'm going to show you what I do. And then I'm actually going to do it in the bowl. So I can show you the full process. So what I have here is some full cream, sour cream. Some people say you should use organic. I can't always get organic, so I just use what I can. Ooh, yummy stuff. You don't need a lot. I take like a, like a teaspoonful, put it in there. And of course you can lick the, the spoon because it's totally edible. And then I'm going to start adding charcoal to it. One capsule at a time. And I need a little stir stick here to mix it all up. And you start mixing it in. And you'll see what starts to form is this gray paste. Now, I usually do it by color. I like a ni nice dark gray color. So I can't give you an exact recipe, but um, I think I want to put a little more in and I may actually have to add a tiny bit more uh, sour cream in there as well. And the reason I like this more is it's a little more durable once this dry than the, um, the alternative, which is the charcoal over the honey. And uh, it stands up a little better to those first few bowls. The charcoal on the honey I found is quite fragile. Uh, it's quite easy to wipe it off. It's quite easy for it to, to get scraped and damaged. And I like the idea of it mixing into your tobacco. Now, of course, this is entirely edible. There we go. That's kind of the consistency that I look for. Kind of a thickish paste like this. And I'll just show you on this piece of wood. You literally just paint this on. Like so. And that dries over 
three or four days, depending on your climate, and becomes a hard, durable surface that is entirely food safe and that is entirely safe for you to put in your pipe. Let's put those back in and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I actually use a paintbrush. Now before I do that, what you need to do, I'm just going to take the stem off for this because it's easier. You want to stop the draft hole from getting any of this. You don't want to block the hole with your coating. So what I do is I stick a I don't know if you guys can see that. I, I stick a pipe cleaner into it so that the tip of the pipe cleaner just becomes visible. And then I take this and I start to paint the inside of the bowl. And initially I take quite a bit. I'm just going to goop it in there. And then once it's in, I start spreading it out and evening it out along the edge of the bowl. Now, it's very easy to clean up and to remove if you've made a mess of it because it's water soluble. And you can see, I just kind of run it up vertically in the bowl like that. Make sure it's nice and even at the bottom. Okay, and that looks quite good. Sometimes you have to kind of just clean off your brush a little bit just to get the bottom nice and even out. There we go. And that's a bowl coating. I think that, uh, there's a little bit of unevenness there. I really get, I like to get this nice and even so it looks quite uniform when it dries. Just for the aesthetics, I mean, it really doesn't matter. And then when I'm done, I'll take a, a cloth and I'll just turn the bowl a little bit like this just to make sure the top edge is nice and clean. Actually, that was a little too much. Sorry, I got to redo that. You do it too much, you actually wipe the stuff back down. There we go. And actually that looks quite nice, just like that. I'm not even going to wipe it again. So that's the bowl coating. So I'll let this sit with the pipe cleaner in it for a few days, let it dry, and then you're ready to smoke your pipe. And that's the final step on the Parker pipe. Now, once this is dried, this little guy is ready to smoke. It's turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous pipe. Look at that beautiful grain on this pipe.